Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Daniel Town Candidate Forum, sponsored by the Wasatch Taxpayers Association. If you're interested in joining the Wasatch Taxpayers Association, go to wasatchtaxpayersassociation.com. And for $10 per person per year, you can help support some of our efforts, and you can go to our website to see what we've been doing. So welcome tonight. We have the mayor candidates tonight. We have Eric Bunker, Scott Kohler, and Mike Duggan. Okay? So we're going to start right off the bat, guys. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running. Eric, go ahead. Eric Bunker, I, I live in Daniel. Uh, I'm not from Daniel, but my kids are. So that tells you how long I've been there. So quite a while. I've, uh, been serving on the town board since it was incorporated. As a council member, I also serve as the planning director for the town. I've been involved on all the issues interlocally with other municipalities and jurisdictions. So I'm well aware of what goes on throughout all of the government actions. So you've probably seen me around. <laughs> Scott. Um, my name is Scott Kohler. I've lived in Daniels for 34 years. Daniel, if you want to pronounce Daniel. I, I've been here so long, they call it Daniels. That's what, how I do it. But, uh, uh, I've lived on the corner of uh, 3000 South and Daniels Road for 34 years. I've raised five kids here in Daniel. I've uh, farmed property for multiple people. Uh, change water in the mornings and in the evenings. I love it. I have loved the ability to get up in the morning and not have my neighbors in my backyard. And uh, I I love the open space. And so uh, Stacy and I uh, have enjoyed living here. Uh, and I'm Scott. Mike. I'm Mike Duggan. <clears throat> Mary and I have lived in Daniel for 20 years. The longest former Navy and the airline pilot, so this is the longest time we've ever lived in one, one spot. And first of all, I think you've got some good choices here, and I have a bad thing to say about either one of these guys. In about 04, 05, I, I, my perception was that we were getting picked on by the county in Heber City, and so I went and talked to some of the what I perceived to be the city fathers, Cal Muir, Clay Carlisle, Neil Duke, a couple of others, and said, would it be a good idea for us to incorporate? And they said, yes, and I said, do I have your permission to try that? And they said, yes, but we don't think you'll be able to get it done. Uh, and on that third try, we actually got the thing done. So like Eric, I've been involved with the town since I was the mayor for, the, for two terms, once we incorporated from, from 06 to 14. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of the accomplishments. I think we've actually done a lot of the work and we've accomplished some, some things with the water company and with a bunch of lawsuits that we had that we won all that when we didn't get into that or not. Largely, I'd like to preserve what we got. There's one big project, Stormhaven Water. I'm sure we'll have time to talk about that. But that's really the only big, major project that I see coming down the pike in the next few years. But great, and keep going. You can start. Um, why are you running this time? Uh, we were involved in so many lawsuits and so much construction with the water company that it was. I did it for eight years. It's a little bit of a burnout deal if you're, if you're into it full time. Fortunately, um, I retired in 03 and been able to put the amount of time in it that it takes. And I've been out for about eight years. I believe in good governance. And so I'm ready to just be, get involved again. Great. Scott, why are you running? So the reason I'm running is uh, to give basically the community uh, the ability to vote. I, I myself am happy that this is the first year that we've ever had an election in Daniel. Um, I'm, I, I feel like that I might be a little underqualified for mayor, and I'm not uh, scared to say that. I, there's probably some things that I don't know about that uh, I'm willing to spend the time and the effort that I need to uh, to learn about this. And over the course of the last couple of weeks since I made this decision, I've spent many hours in all of your homes, not, not everybody that's here, but I, I believe that we govern, uh, the government is for the people, by the people, and of the people. Uh, my father was a history teacher and taught me that from a young age. 
and I believe that as a community, uh, if we have decisions that need to be made, it'll be made by the community. And I decided to run because I felt like it was time to make a difference and give people the opportunity to vote. Great, thanks, Eric. So the reason I chose to run this time is because I see some paramount issues that's gonna face Daniel. We're under constant attack because it became what exactly what we said, the place to be. So everybody wants to be there. That was the incept when we inception on that. That was what we envisioned down the road. And I think that we have a lot of pressure from outside sources, bigger, more money, that are applying pressure to the town. And I think it will be a defense, and I, I believe that we will need everybody on board to push those issues and maintain what we have. Great. So moving forward, um, give us some of the reasons why you think you would be a good mayor. What do you bring to the table? What do you think your good qualities are that the town could really use? Scott? So, uh, <clears throat> some of the good qualities that I possess is uh, listening and being able to have common sense and to make decisions uh, based on information that's gathered and not just uh, have, a, have a personal agenda, which I do not have a personal agenda, by the way. I feel like um, I, I am relatable, I can talk to anybody, and I can understand uh, situations from both uh, sides and both, both uh, your viewpoint and my viewpoint. And so I feel like uh, I, I have the ability to listen and to work hard and to provide um, the guidance and understanding that we need to moving forward in the future. Eric? Um, uh, my qualifications for mayor is, of course, my experience. I've been, in, I've been involved with the town, but I think it's how much I'm engaged with the things going on. In the last, in the last, this year, the governor signed in 130 new bills. A lot of those affect towns and what we can have, apartments and dwellings. All those things that the, we get our powers from the, from the state of Utah. That's who gives the town their rights to, to make their own rules. And so that's, that is the local governments. That is their job, is to regulate the things the state says you can regulate. Things will come along and they'll take those away. That very like the apartments that I talked about. That has been taken away. The state says we have a housing crisis. We're going to allow that. And so all these things that you have to be involved with on higher levels and multiple levels to make sure you're in compliance. And I think that the reason that I qualify for that is because I'm already involved in those things. Mike. It looks like to me one of the only major things that we've got other than preserving what we have and maintain, maintaining our zoning is the Stormhaven water system is woefully underdeveloped. So we have a good well up there right now. Over the next four to six years, well, there's no storage up there at all. And so uh, one of my skills is, is applying for grants and loans and writing loan applications, for, but we've got about three and a half million dollars to rebuild the system that we have right now. I'd like to see some storage up there. If we go to minimal, we can go 300,000 gallon tank. A larger tank would be 750 or 800,000, which is what we have in the Daniel system currently. I'd really like to hook them together. That Now we're talking probably upwards of $6 million. Uh, as of this afternoon, the Senate bill had a little over $1 trillion in actual infrastructure. About $50 billion of that is for water infrastructure. So if we're at the head of that line to apply for grants and loans, I think we can end up, so that's $50,000 million, if you can imagine how much that actually is. But I plan on standing, standing it's, it's, uh, it's a big number. But if we're standing in line for that, I think we can end up with a system, if we have another 750 gallon, 1,000 gallon tank up there, and we can hook them together, we can have a legacy of being able, of being able to provide international fire flows for virtually the entire valley. I think that's, I think that's doable. Eric, um, what do you see in the next um, five, ten years as being the two most important issues that Daniel's going to face, and why would you be a good mayor to get 
Daniel to that point. I think I think it's hard to say what will happen in 10 years because you look 10 years back and you would never believe we are where we are. So, I mean, the future is so fast right now with... Uh, okay, five years. Yeah. <laughs> years. Yeah. Next five years. <laughs> Next five years. Next Thursday. <laughs> so it's just huge. I mean, that's why, that's why I say to get involved and be on top of those issues. Growth is going to be one of our biggest issues that we're going to face. And I think that that is going to be our number one issue is growth and the development uh, pressures, and that comes in lawsuits, that comes in all sorts of different avenues, pressure against the town for having those things. I mean, it does no good for your property to be worth $2 million if you're not selling it. it. All it does is raise your taxes. And I think that those things that we do to save the agricultural community, to make those things our values that we have as a community, and to hold those people close and those seeds precious. They're precious. You can't go somewhere and get that. Everybody's here for that reason. It's precious. So, Scott, what do you think you've seen in the last five years that you agreed with that if you were mayor, you would have um, been proud? Uh, you know, since you weren't an incumbent or involved in the city directly, it's like, is there anything that has happened in the last five years that you could say, yes, that was a good idea? Well, and I, you know, I, like you said, I've lived here a long time, and there, there has been some good things that have happened here in the Daniel area. Um, right off of my, right off the top of my head, I can't really think of one that just sticks out. Right. to me as being uh, being exceptional but uh, I feel like that uh, Mike and uh, and Eric has done a great job in the in the things that they have done in the decisions that they've made you know keep an open space obviously <coughs> is uh, a top priority and I feel like that up to this point that has been managed very well and, and is something that we could be proud of um, Daniel is really the, the last area in the whole county where we do have the five acre space and we're able to, to do the things that uh, we can do with our families and with our neighbors and with agriculture and, and all of that. And so I would say that the open space is probably that. So the biggest job of the mayor is to manage the city, probably. Right? City Council votes on everything. You set the agendas. You manage the city. Um, what are a couple of your ideas on how to manage the city moving forward? Mike? I think it would be desirable for us to have a, a, a place to meet of our own. <clears throat> I think it's time. I think uh, there was a lot of volunteerism early on. I and mean, we didn't have anybody that could spray the weeds. And so, I went and got a license to do that, as did Eric. We didn't have a water operator, and we got knocked down a bunch of points for that. So Eric, again, Eric and I went down to Utah Valley University, took the, the college class on how to be a water operator, went and passed that. So was, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I was talking to somebody from the state, and they said, well, put your staff on the phone. And I said, you are talking to the staff. <laughs> So I think we're going to have to move a little bit away from, from pure volunteerism, but I still think there needs to be some of that. I think the salaries in the town have, have gone up quite a bit faster than inflation. I think that's something we, we should consider. Um, most of it, we're kind of singing the same tune here. We've got to keep the zoning, and that's going to be a, that's going to be a big fight with uh, money and lawyers, and it uh, sounds like everybody is in agreement with that. That sound stuff. That's here tonight, anyway. This, uh, so. <laughs> we have to preserve what, what we've got, and that's not going to be as easily done as it is said. Scott. So moving forward, some of the things that I <clears throat> that I think are really important is that we have a way to keep people informed on what's going on, um, and when there are public meetings, um, I feel like it's important that the doors are open and that people can get into these meetings. I, I've been to a few meetings where uh, recently and even in the past where the meeting's supposed to start at 6 o'clock, you go to there and the, the building's locked up and you know they're in having the meeting but you can't get in there and so 
Uh, I, I really feel like it's important that moving forward that we provide information to the whole community, whether that's in the form of a newsletter. Uh, not everybody has the internet anymore. Uh, there, uh, you know, there's a large population in Daniels that um, don't have the internet and don't have a way to get on to websites and different things like that. And so, moving forward, I think communication. I think. Uh, buildings being open when they're supposed to be open and somebody having a little bit of uh, ability to go do that. Great. Eric, how would you manage the town as the mayor? Well, I think, I think the hardest part of being the mayor is educating people so that they know the issues and they're able to make a, a valid discussion and a vote on those issues. And that, that goes throughout everything that you do. The issues that come up, the education on it, and if people don't come out, they don't know, and then all of a sudden they're making a decision on half the information. And I think that that's a valid point. You, you, if they're not involved, they just don't know, and then all of a sudden the issue is there. And we see that constantly. People just don't get involved until it's in their, in their backyard, and that's when people come out. Well, and also, though, as I said, the mayor does manage the actual town and the staff. And if you're talking about Daniel growing and maybe not being such a volunteer effort, that you actually have a staff, what's your vision of that town and how would you manage the city? That's the question. Well, I, I think right now, like Mike had said, it's time to get a building. We don't have a building. The planning office is in my house. That's where it's at. I mean, we have a clerk with an office now. We've upgraded to that. And it's just a slow progression. We don't have a lot of money. We're a thousand residents. Taxes are low. People don't want those services. They want their taxes low. We don't want all the services that Heber City has. So I think that that has been that has been portrayed from the residents, and we've been able to manage that as we go forward. And this will be a big step uh, of getting some place to me. We currently meet over at the county, and I know what Scott's talking about. The county installed a new system, and when you go out the door. It locks behind you, and so if somebody kicked out the door, <coughs> and it locked. And that's just their new system. We we had to borrow that place. That's what that's where we meet. That's how we go. Right. So managing managing, and again, I've been on the planning commission as a planning director. So managing it always takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to bring people and educate them. So let's go down the road here and say your name, your contact info, and then talk about a few things you want to tell the public about yourself. Because you brought up some things that maybe got accomplished prior to this. So tell people who you are, how they can contact you, and then name a couple things that you want the public to know about you. I'm Mike Duggan. Uh, M-D-U-G-G-I-N at msn.com. My cell phone is 435-671-6196. Um, they were talking about communication. I, a former mayor of Hebrew City said, sometimes the room is full and you wish it was empty, and sometimes it's empty and you wish it was full. But communication is definitely difficult in this age. And you think, oh, everybody's got the internet. But no, they don't. And we used to have a radio station here that you could go on and talk on that and get, get that out to quite a few people. The newspaper, you can write letters, but it's, I don't know how many of you take the newspaper anymore. So it's, we tried the newsletter a couple of times. It's really tough to do. And uh, several summers ago, we were replaced, replacing the main water line on 3000 South. And I was, uh, well, it's been at least eight years because I was still the mayor. But I was standing out there watching, we're digging lines, and some guy came up and he said, uh, you know, you shut my water off. You could have told me that you were going to do that. And uh, the kid that I was working with standing there, he said, Sir, I put the flyer in your hand on your front porch yesterday morning at 10 o'clock. And he said, Well, I didn't have a chance to look at that yet. And I thought, That's perfect. That's the perfect. You can't get it out there. So, I mean, sometimes they come and they're just mad because you didn't, you didn't communicate. But there's no mechanism to, to communicate with everybody, even, even in here. So. And so, I, uh, before mentioned, the, the water system that we need to re rebuild, and I'd like to have some sort of town hall, some place that we can meet, some place that we can have regular hours uh, for, for a secretary that people can take applications. 
I'd also like to work on streamlining the application process. I feel like we're kind of strung out on that right now. We can get that to one spot where we can turn applications for building or whatever around in two weeks or less. I mean, as you all know, we don't have that long a, a building season here. So I think those are some of the things that are important going forward. Great. Scott? So my name is Scott Kohler. Uh, my email address is scott.kohler12 at yahoo.com. My cell phone number is 435-671-6471. And uh, some, of, some of the things moving forward, um, obviously I've never been a mayor before. I don't have a huge uh, lot of accolades of what I've done and what I've accomplished, but the one thing that I want you to know is, is that <clears throat> uh, all my kids are raised now. Stacy and I, Stacy's tired of me chasing her around the house, and so <laughs> I've got a lot of time on my hands. And, uh, I, I'm willing to work hard. I've been a contractor my, <clears throat> my whole life, 25 years. I've built a lot of houses, and I've built a lot of commercial properties in a lot of different communities. Um, I have an understanding of business, uh, how to run and operate a business, uh, how to how to uh, utilize assets, uh, whether they're people in the community. Um, I feel like that it's important that uh, if there's big issues facing us coming up, that we create committees and we put you individuals on these committees and we gather information together and we listen to each other and we learn from each other and moving forward, I feel like uh, that's a quality that I bring to the table, being able to uh, manage that, facilitate that, and get in the trenches and get dirty with you. I don't... Uh, Thanks, Scott. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have, you have three minutes, Eric. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're on a time frame, so... Eric Bunker. Uh, my email address is ericbunker at danielutah.org. It's also found on the town website. My phone number is there also. You can find all my information there. Uh, moving forward and, and things I think we've talked about a lot of those things. I, you have great, great choice. This is a great year to be in the election because you have great choices all the way around. We have not had this kind of umph for elections. In fact, what, four years ago, there was 45 people that decided the election in, in Daniel. That's the kind of turnout we get. So I'm so excited that we're getting this kind of turnout and seeing people involved. Now to put the plug in for the town, we have openings on the boards right now. We have Board of Adjustment and we have planning app openings. Those people can get involved. Anybody can put in an application and get involved and be involved in those things. And I think that moving forward helps communicate and portray out to the community. Great, thank you. We'll take a break.